a little bit more. I think. Are you coming out of the speaker? One, two, no, nah, not really. Well, I can hear myself and see if you look at the level. The level is <coughs> sounding okay, but it's not as loud as you. Okay. One, two, yes. I'm pretty loud. I can turn myself down to match. So you, you might think I'm uh, face a little bit more. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Let's take it down. Touch. Okay, now we have to, this is where. Cross posting. So we're going to cross post, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so watch. Watch and learn from the guru. <laughs> Closed camera rolling. Um, cross posting more pages. Hold on. stream is right here okay yep it's kind of from the all right middle, yep and look we need to write something here so say something about this little bit uh, uh, q and a q and a No one really does this down here. Um, we're talking.
Good evening, folks. <laughs> One, two. So who's in the house? Tell us, uh, oh. <laughs> Tell us how the audio sounds. Sounds uh, pretty boomy in here. Um, how many people? 32 people at the moment. Um, okay. <laughs> this is not something I do very often, so it's a special occasion. Uh, going live, I'm usually the behind the decks but we're here to uh, have a chat, um, help promote the um, Flows release coming out tomorrow. And, and just have a chat about all things, hip hop, rap, local stuff. So, oh, all you guys on the on the chat as well, send through some, uh, some questions. We'll get live with the questions a bit later. So, yeah, man. Okay, better get to my questions. How does the audio sound? Is, there, is everybody, let us know if the audio sounds all good through the stream. Yeah. Okay. So, feast flows. Uh, before we talk about questions and that, do you want to um, just break down uh, the album info? Where you can buy it, where to listen to it, where to get your merch, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so um, you can get the uh, pre-order the album right now at uh, iTunes Music, Apple Music, and Spotify. Um, and uh, we're going to have some physicals available soon. And um, merch will be available soon with the... Uh, the first lot of merch being free Ali for the first single. Sweet. Um, okay. So, how long, like, first off, how long has, has this been, has this project been underway? And also, like, um, who are the people involved in the whole project? You want to talk about producers, other MCs, even management behind the background, you know? Yeah. Um, Excuse me. Um, so this project is, uh, I started writing it last year around June, July, 2019. Um, and uh, in regards to the production, I reached out to um, a lot of guys from outside my city. Uh, Priyali, Priyali uh, was produced by Infectious from Christchurch. Um, and collaborated with uh, Andrew Major, Hiltu Walla Flavor, and uh, he's from Auckland. Um, also some production from, remember Addison, Pioneer. I got a track that uh, we did together from back in the days, which features, uh, it also features uh, Dirty Waters from uh, Linden and Tawa. The MOE connection. What up to my guy, Dirty Waters. Johnny Chong Ni. It's a old school head that, you know, I really uh, look up to as a musician. Someone that's helped me on my journey. So, um, you know, he was a part of that process. Um, most of the writing I did, you know, over a three month period, once I gathered all the beats, took me about July, August, September. I, I, got, I managed to get all the beats I wanted and then I, I wrote all the lyrics like in three months from August to October, November. And then I flew to, I demoed everything and then I flew to Christchurch and I re-recorded all my vocals down at the guest room. Shout outs to my guys at the guest room, Ecos and LT from uh, Christchurch. Yeah. Yeah, I got, got a lot of friends and, and a lot of family down there in Christchurch. Um, you know that we've been uh, that we've been involved with over the years. Hold on, let me just turn this off. Sorry. Um, and we've kept those connections. And <coughs> so I visit 
uh, Christchurch regularly and and uh, catch up with with those people. Okay, so um, the first single video is coming out. What's what's the plan for the next year? What what's your um, what's your goals for the, like the next year to come? I know there's a lot of lockdowns happening, so it's uh, it's like up and down. So release wise, all that sort of stuff. Um. Well, you know, once once I got the project off the ground, um, in regards to recording it all, I went to um, Nisi and and got the project mixed down. Uh, you know, I feel like Nisi's got a you know a special talent for being able to, you know, cater to guys sonic and sound, you know, and Nisi knows my sonic and sound just like yourself really well, and so working with Nisi. You know, it's always tough working with other creative guys. You know, part of the process when you work with creative people is you have to accept, uh, you know, everything that comes with that creative process. And uh, so Johnny Chong Nee mixed down the project and then we took it to Chris Chetland, which is, you know, as you know, someone that uh, we used to go to together with the Foot Soldiers, which is where we started that journey. And... Um, and then um, once I figured out what I wanted to do, I kind of had a thought, we were thinking about releasing it, and I I remember speaking to you about, you know, talking to Ancoz, talking to you about uh, communication with, I've been communicating with um, Andy and Brother D and DJ Severe and a few other people in regards to getting a critique on the project, some feedback before I released it, and um, ended up, making a decision that uh, I was going to run with uh, Andy at 1979 MGT and so um, Andy as you know has been helping me push out you know the project and um, the King of Wellington releases tonight and um, I'm already working with Ricky Paul and um, on two new projects which um, is another follow-up album and a project called the Cigar Music Catalogue. Yeah. So what's that about with Cigar Music stuff? Oh, man. Yeah, you know, um, well, you know, you know, young fellas, you know, they have, they have their favourite things to do and, you know, we're OGs now and things change as you get older and, you know, the Cigar Music Catalogue is like, um, music that I'm writing and creating. You remember how we came up listening to songs like, uh, you know, artists like Al Green and, and all the soul stuff. Um, I remember a lot of stuff you used to sh sample back in the day, like Shaka Khan and, well, you know, the Cigar Music Catalog is kind of a reference to that. Like, I wanna be that, that known as that guy, like the, yo, let's listen to this shit, kick back, smoke a blunt, chill, like soulful, yeah. Yeah, not so much bangers, like really, you know, Mac music, you know, like that fly shit, you know, drink cognac, smoke cigars and, and um, you know, party with the flyest. That's what that shit is about, it's fly shit. But like, uh, remember how we used to talk about Cosmo, that character, he always used to play in Mac Dolevo, Simone Pimp, the Simone Mac. <laughs> it's that shit. It's reminiscent of my man Cosmo 163 and all his style and his charisma, his confidence, his communication with women, you know, how he, you know, he's just a Mac, a real, a true player's player, the best wingman you could have in the world. And that's what cigar music is, is really about. It's like a catalog of music that's on some fly shit. The old tier all fly shit. Us fly shit. Nice. Um, so the the first single, um, Bali Cabana, that came out and it's done pretty well so far. What's that um what's it up to now? I think it's like sixteen, eh? Thousand views and yeah. post the charting. Which um man. So Remember we released a song and the video came out and a week later uh, we had, you know, over 10,000 views and 
the pre-order went to number one on iTunes and Apple Music as the most pre-ordered album in all tier all, but not just on our charts, also on the international charts. Like only for a few days, but I mean, like that's you know, to me, those are like boxes that you tick, you know, and you never think will happen, but you know, like that's that's kind of cool. So Friali got a really good response with uh, people, and um, he yeah he. We managed to do a few things that we I didn't even think was going to happen. So you went to number one with the pre-order. And right now, Free Ali is sitting at number eight on the um, New Zealand top 20 on the charts, which is buzzy too. I'm pretty buzzed out because, you know, first time kind of vibes for that sort of buzz. But, um, you know, just real happy with the support and and um, everybody's showing love. It's... Free Ali's been a great track. It's dedicated to my brother Ali, as you know, currently locked up in the system. And there's many people like my brother Ali who are locked up in the system, fighting courts, trying to get their freedom. And, uh, you know, we went through a few things over that last year, that period when I was riding the King of Wellington. My brother got locked up. And so that was a big reason and a why I, I put my boots back on, but also. As you know, Cosmo163 got really sick, our guy, got cancer. And uh, that was, you know, that was that was another reason I decided to get back in the booth and start writing again. And as 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 negative as it was, I turned it around and made it a positive and and it really inspired me to get, get back in the booth and and record some some dope music. Oh, shout out to uh Cosmo as well, he's a uh, Australian legend, he's been all over in Australia, he's um, got a whole lot of new products coming out too, so check him out on uh, Instagram, Australian, hey, um, so this is, this is quite new for Cosmo, you remember when we uh, first got uh, Foot Soldier stuff, man, we were printing CDs and yeah. kind of hustling, selling privately and through record stores and that. Charging your views was all sort of digital still online. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, all right, so just gotta check. Someone uh, messaged me and said they couldn't hear properly. So audio, how's that audio? My audio uh, sounds good, but roars. Play some music tools. Yeah. All right. Good luck. So yeah, let's um, let's talk a bit of history. Down just a touch bit. Because um, you're one for a bit of a historian who likes to, <laughs> you know, the one thing with Wellington is so small. Everyone knows. Same one there. Everyone knows the story. Yeah. You know what I mean? The 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 OGs and like people look at me say I'm an OG, but I've got other guys that I looked up to when I was a young fella. No OGs. So. Um, and the, I think there's a real, real bit of a, a gap with all the new generation guys actually not, not really knowing the history of Wellington. So, I mean, what's your, what's your take on the keeping the history part alive? I think, um, I think it's really important. You know, that's the whole purpose of having OGs is the the original uh, caretakers of the city, as we, you know, you could say, like um, the guys who planted the seed for me to be here, or for us to be here in this place that we're at right now. You know, I think it's real important for um, young fathers to understand, you know, OG's comp you know contribution, and that's why I really pride myself on our history, especially here in Wellington, because I can't really speak on everyone else's history, but I can speak on what I know. And I know that Wellington has a lot of depth and the history is a really big part of that. That's why our city is, is the way it is. You know, it's got a rich, rich history and, and it's, it's the culture here. Like the OGs uh, built a really, you know, a, a culture where you could, um, um, contribute something and they had the doors open I think that's 
was important was that part of it, you know, having um, OGs like yourself and Coz and King PC and Kaz and, um, you know, guys like uh, Sugar Pop and Dean Harpeter and Reese B and Vinny Demucha and um, the Dancehall Dons, Don Michito. These all guys, when I was growing up and I, was, I didn't go to school, all these guys, I'd go to their houses and knock on their doors every day. See if I could get in their house so I could bust some rhymes, you know? And they'd always let me in. So, you know, that's why I think it's real important for, um, well, myself, because I can even speak for myself. That's why I hold the, hold the OGs in high regard. You know, they, they built the culture of hip hop here and, and um, we're the guys that, that have to continue that, you know? Who's there? Cosmo. Stop calling us. Uh, Cosmo trying to call us? Yo, yo, guys, you want to talk? <laughs> uh, okay, but yeah, so, I mean, me, Cos, and uh, most of those guys that you mentioned, we all started in the 80s. Yeah. Know, and, uh, so who, who were some of the guys that started around your time, like uh, you know, Tony Costas and, and, and those guys that you were? With. Um, with, you know, in that, in that older school circle. Yeah, well, I remember, um, I'm, you know, Tony Costa is a guy that had was the only guy who had turntables in the hood back in the days, you know, besides yourself, but, you know, one of the kids that we knew locally. And he was one of those guys that, you know, let all the bros come over and and listen to music and have a spin on his decks and he'd have all the parties at his house and stuff like that, you know. Um, also, you know, because I, I used to hang hang out in Cuba Mall and Manor's Mall quite a lot and a lot of my boys were into rap but we didn't know nothing about the culture but we just loved to rap, you know. The first time I got exposed to rap was Kenny McFadden, maybe 1988 when I was a little, when I was like 11 years old playing basketball for the local school in, in Seatoon Strathmore and Kenny became our coach and Kenny would um, you know after training would, would he'd give us a ride home all the young fellas and he'd, he had these tapes this is, he had a Mazda 323 you remember the crimson one back in the days he used to drive around yeah he used to pick us up in that take us home and we'd put these tapes in the, in the tape deck and um, those tapes were from the States, his brother was a DJ and um, in New York. And so the, the music he was playing was, little did we know, was the latest hip hop shit that was going over there, happening over there. And we didn't even know it was rap, but in between the breaks, he would rap, but didn't really explain to us what it was. We just listened and we looked at each other like, bro, what's that shit? But not even knowing what it really was, you know, until later when, I met you guys, you know, when I went to college. Well, I wagged most of my college, so I didn't even make it to school, but, <laughs> you know. Um, well, let's, let's get back to the, <coughs> the new project. Um, how, many, how many tracks and give us a breakdown of, the, of what's on there, like uh, a basic breakdown of what the songs are about, maybe? Yeah, okay, um, so Free Ali, opening track. The intro is my brother talking to me from prison. Um, you know, one day I was in the studio recording and he rung in the middle of a recording session and I thought, wow, this could be the perfect moment to catch up my brother, you know, and get him involved in a song. And that's how Free Ali came about. I added that to the infectious beat and it just worked, you know, the eerie beat. I really like that kind of shit with the choir you know, and the slamming 808s, real simple, nothing flash to it, but it was the story that really was empowering, you know. Um, after Free Ali, we're following up the second single we just shot last week, and we're getting ready, it's an edit, uh, the editing, editor with the editor Scott Mulligan right now, we shot it at Flash Dog Studios with our guy David Hamilton, and uh, Bria, amazing uh, crew, amazing team, thanks to um, Flash Dog for having us. Um, Rap Life, 
which is, you know, that's my dedication to MCs, you know? And and the B-Boys, the B-Girls, it's a rap track, it's just hip-hop shit, it's, it's just ugly, it's not pretty, it's, you know, just bars, you know, just raps, I'm just rapping like, I'm in beast mode in there, you know? Flowzilla, I'm in that Flowzilla mode for rap life. Um, after rap life, uh, trying to win, trying to win is just like a, you know, it's one of those, you know, after years of, you know, trial and tribulation and hurdles and, you know, after you, you've been through life and you go through some things, um, you realise that the, at the end of it all, you're just trying to be, you're just trying to win and you're trying to be successful and you're trying to be positive, you know, you're trying to create something um, that you've always been passionate about and you're trying to make something of that. That's trying to win and that's dedicated to, you know, all our peoples out there, you know, and, you know, our life strugglers. And you know, COVID was a tough time for all our people. So man, that song is perfect for 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 all our peeps out there. Um, then um, <laughs> I got this track on there called Black Chucks. I produced it myself. <laughs> it's not the best track, you know. It's like it's all right, but I just like to contribute something to my projects because I'm a creative dude, you know. And it's not necessarily my best skill making and producing beats, but I love the process, you know. I think it's any MCs kind of, you know, you know, thinking is to be able to produce and and write and mix and master their own shit. And that's just artist temperament, you know, but it's something that I enjoy doing and that track, Black Chucks, is sort of my contribution. And and it's the remix has got poetic on it. And what up to my bro, Young Ooh's poetic, one of the hardest workers in uh, hip hop right now, doing his thing support my guy online and uh, buy some poetic uh, merch. Um, and then um, I've got a track on there with Andrew Major, Lil Tell, he's a producer from Auckland. One of the brothers I just connected with online and, and uh, you know, he just seemed, seemed like an authentic person and I just, he, he threw me some music and I was like, yo, I'm keen. I'm keen as to, um, to get a, um, to get some of that music, so. Then um, there's three other, there's three bonus tracks on um, on that project as well, which is which are tracks that um, I didn't really promote heavy. Like I recorded them and I released them, but I didn't really, I didn't really promote them and market them the way that, you know, I could have better. So I figured I'll put them on this this project as bonus tracks for people so they could listen to my to my a little bit of the, my history and what I've been up to. So I've been working the whole time, but during those tracks, I was helping a whole lot of group of kids, as you know, make music called Teodor. We had a whole team there of, of, of young talent that, you know, we, we kind of, we did some really great things with, and I'm super proud of those young, you know, those 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 artists because they all became their own men in their own in their own lanes as well. So those last three songs, those extra bonus tracks are just something to give to the peeps as a, you know, showing some form. And it's one track features Ehrman, the OG, my guy. What up? What up to my also Ehrman? You know, Ehrman, uh, I got a special relationship with Ehrman. I, I met Ehrman on the Proud Tour. And I didn't really know Ehrman back in the days when I was real lung, when I was searching and I was real lost. I remember going to Auckland one day and just catching the bus and just going there searching for hip hop, even though it was right here in my city. And Ehrman picked me up from the bus stop and took me to his house and fed me and I stayed with his family and I stayed with the bro in the garage and just watched how he did his thing. And so, you know, I got much love for the bro, we got history. And uh, that track's called I Don't Care. And then um, Free West Papua, J10. Went up to my guy, J10. Um, you know, you gotta come back to the studio, young man. We gotta do some music. And Genocide from Hastings, uh, Terrorized Records, another young, talented uh, artist, rap musician, MC, uh, who uh, came here from Bosnia as a refugee, and now has you know built himself and his family a new life. As you know, Bosnia was a war-torn country, and um, so Free West Papua is like a dedication to our people in, in West Papua who are currently facing um, genocide. You know, um, the gold uh, companies in America, Australia, New Zealand are, c are currently stripping that whole island of all their resources. 
And that song is dedicated to the West Papuan people who are part of our DNA line here in uh, the South Pacific. You know, they're our Melanesian brothers and sisters, which is a connection to us as Polynesians, as um, as we connected to the Taiwanese and the Southeast Asians, that black African uh, Southeast Asian bloodline that we're connected to. Those Melanesians are part of, you know, we're a part of their bloodline as well. So that song represents our people, the West Papuans. And then finally, um, the last track, I don't care, Free West Papua, um, They Talking Loud, which features DJ Gooder. It's just some rap shit, just heavy bars, heavy rap shit, you know, just street street wisdom and knowledge, you know, and that's the King of Wellington. Um, that's the new project, you know, um, I'm hoping you will go out there and pre-order it now before it drops tonight at midnight. Let's try and push that up to number one, currently sitting at number eight. We've got a great team that's been helping us getting things together. I really appreciate you all. Um, and um, I'm real happy with this project, The King of Wellington. So, just a little, little bit further back, you were talking about uh, a lot of the kids that you work with, because I know we've done worked on stuff, uh, community stuff, uh, Mission for the Youth, uh, uh, MC School, uh, and there's a lot of kids that came out of all those programs there. Yeah. So, I mean, I know you're doing a lot of other, other community work, uh, well, using <laughs> networks anyway. Yeah. Can you talk about that? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm one of those kids from the community, as you know, Raw. You know, we come up through the system as well, heavily caught up, you know, in crime. And, and um, you know, the community is a place that helped me uh, find a way out of that, that life and into something positive and constructive where I could use my skills as a criminal and inject it into something positive. So, you know, we discovered rap and now instead of kicking in people's doors and stealing from people and trying to rob motherfuckers for their money, we, I was now learning how to fill my time writing raps and ciphering trying to sharpen my blade. So when I hooked up with other MCs, um, you know, MCs and DJs, when we all get together, we just jam and cypher and have a good time. So, um, you know, that's, that's a big part of, of our journey. Um. be the battery. Okay. Um, someone on the chat is just asking about the merch game, so probably missed the beginning. So. Uh, what? Merch? Yeah, so I just want to ask you where the merch is. Oh, so, um, yeah, what's up to everybody? We just got a little audio problem with Raw, but uh, the, in, in regards to the clothing, um, I just recently, I merged with uh, a company called the Merch Brothers. What up to my guy, George Cialis, out here in Wellington City, um, also... Uh, the guy who designs uh, for my, my company. And my New, the new uh, merch so that'll be out real soon um, hopefully next week or the week after we're supposed to get that and uh, we're, we're, we're pressing physicals at the moment so we'll have all of those things ready to go and uh, just trying to get a little Shopify shop up and running
also pre-order for Spotify. Uh, tonight's Q and A is about, as Raw said, you know, we're just discussing the album and a little bit of history and a timeline, but also we're trying to push the pre-order up and get people to buying the new project before midnight hits, so that um, we can try and take that number one spot. We're currently sitting at number eight. That's Free Ali Gabano on the, the top 20 New Zealand charts. I think that's amazing. It's the first time I've ever had a song, um, you know, in the top 20. And um, and it's hip hop. And it's a track that ain't even got a fucking motherfucking hook, a chorus. It's got a motherfucking intro and about a 32 bar rap. Nothing else. <laughs> and then uh, at the end, which is... Buzzy, bro. Yeah. yeah. On my pack? <laughs> my, uh, my back pack. Just up a little bit, too. Yeah. Oh, cool. Play some music, uh, Paulus, you know, it's a little, little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to use your third hand, brother. All right. Oh, yes, what up to our man, uh, DJ uh, Soundwave, in the background there, Paulus, always been holding us down. It's back in the days, part of the Make Music Gold Teodor uh, boss table. And what up to uh, Sin, our producer, and uh, what up to our, our DOP, David Hamilton here at Flash Dog. Okay. My mic uh, is all good. You can turn. Okay. Let's talk about <coughs> some gigs that you have done over the, like, some memorable gigs, because... We've done tons of shows over the years uh, for foot soldier stuff, but then overseas stuff as well. Um, I mean, because back when foot soldiers came out, the, the scene was vibrant, you know what I mean? It was like, it was huge. That was the show that really put us on, mm. hey, Cos's show, Funk Republic. Cos uh, used to um, outsource to uh, Damn Native and Shea Fu. Yeah. I remember still being on school and Cos taking us on tour to places like New Plymouth and for the Funk Republic tour, yeah. and they would be fucking packed. Mm. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what the fuck, bro? Jesus, I an IT. But um, some memorable shows, man. You know, remember that Big Day Out show where, it, <laughs> you know what was so memorable, Dave, about our shows was every motel we went into, we got kicked out. The management, it was, uh, <laughs> the tour promoters had to rebook <laughs> us in a motel two or three times. It was the uh, Hip Hop Summit up in Auckland. <laughs> Yeah, we were in that little that room downstairs bunking, eh? Yep. Yeah, it's, uh, there's so many memorable moments. Um, you know, um, our release party of the EP at um, San Fran, and we had the projector screen, and we had all those people from Wellington City throwing us shout outs. And remember, we had our guy, Kim, Luxa guy, who made the, oh, Luxa! Down at Wakefield Market. You remember that motherfucker, Dave? Huh? Everybody knows that motherfucker, bro. He was world famous here in Wellington. Famous laksa in the pork. When he called you for your order, man. Pork and laksa! Kim was his name. You know that we've been searching for Kim's laksa for the last 20 years since he passed away. And we found it in Tory Street at this place, Soltro or something, eh? It was his nephew, eh? His nephew. His nephew had learnt the... His nephew had learnt the... Um, Family recipe, and his nephew had learnt the technique, and so we were there. Me and Raw, we go there and eat, and then his business went down. And then next minute, we were at the motherfucking um, Asian kitchen now. Same, <laughs> same family, same tree. Hey.
Wow. That's the most for me. Like I say, yeah, Coz. You know, Coz, he taught us a lot about food, eh? Just one thing. That guy loves his food. But, you know, he taught us about quality. Like, like life's too short for shit food. That's, he's the original motherfucking TM of that shit, you know? Introduced us to Asian food and Japanese food and curries and, you know, he's just, that's what I'm saying. He is the original Mac Dolivol, you know? He's it taught me so much that... Even to this day, I still, you know, when Cos when Cos left Wellington City, man, I was like, what the fuck are we gonna do? You know, like, rap wise, I knew the DJing side and that was sorted. You you had that shit on locals. What I was worried about was like the, the hip, you know, the, the cipher side and the, the rap side and the MC side, you know, because remember Cos was the guy who had the kitchen, and the kitchen was like the place where we all gathered and got together at. Everyone knew, yo, fuck, it's the weekend, we go to the kitchen. And there would be ciphers from the time the fucking door would open until it closed. And, um, you know, when Coz left Wellington, there was a huge gap. Like, uh, that's how I felt. Like, I felt like, man, fuck. And then I felt like, yo, we could lose all of this history if, if we don't step up and do something or release something or you know what i mean like i was really i was it was really on my heart bro on my mind big time and cause you know he, he had cancer too so you know fuck man it was it was one of those moments where it was like yo you know the og of our city for rap had moved over to another motherfucking place and he was trying to do him and 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 build his life over an Aussie, which fucked me up because I was like, well, why, you know, like, shit. But I understand now. And then while he was over there, he found out he got cancer and then he died and shit. And you know, bro, he spoke to us all the time about that shit. We were there right from the motherfucking beginning to right now. He healed up, he beat it, and he was so positive the whole time. Man, that gave me energy. That made me want to fight harder. I was like, yo, fuck, get up, bro. You gotta push this Wally Hook Hop shit. You gotta make this shit happen. And that was my drive, cause of my brother, you know? So having that gap with cause gone, it was kind of like hard for me to kind of like figure out, you know, what what, what my, my role was because I was the grasshopper of the crew. But I learned so much that I sat down and consciously I was like, yo, man, I know what I need to fucking do. I need to fucking grab the baton and I need to build a new routine and I need to train my ass off. I need to get back in the booth and write my motherfucking heart out and and jump back in. And, bro, <laughs> here we are. Pop ones, but also for the MCs, you know, open mics and all that stuff. Uh, who are like some of the the new generation guys that you you're checking out or you see coming up doing from know, here? Like, yeah, from Wellington. Man, there's so many, bro. You know, what up to my what up to my man Juice? You know, the Rhyme Tank. We came up together, battling in the battling, you know, in the battle scene. You know, at each other's necks. But that's a Wellington thing. The cipher and the freestyle is a huge part of, of what we do. And if you're an MC and you're ciphering and freestyling with, with the team, you need to sharpen your blades and get that motherfucker cipher game hard. But, um, you know, Juice and the Wanderers, guys that I, you know, I enjoyed listening to, you know. You know, the P-Town, the Potty Door, you know, boys, HCK, you know, Tommy, Hummel Fired and the Fob Mode Squad from back in the days. Some of my favorite guys I used to listen to. You know, P-Town, I got a lot of love for P-Town. My kids were all born in P-Town, so I got a connection to that place. We worked there for a long time for Today Politic, DJ school and the rap school. Um, you know, um, I like the One Roof kids, you know, Dills. We worked with Dills and, you know, Dills making moves with Ash and Hugh Tanner and all those boys doing their thing. Um, our boy Shogun. You know, 
Shogun's one of the kids that we mentored since he was a young fella. Same with K1 Indigenous Son and Del C and all the devious boys from back in the days. You know, those are those are my guys. You know, even though um, I'm here, here on the, I'm doing my thing, I still remember those people because those were that, that was part of my journey. Positive and negative, I don't really give a fuck. You know, you always got to remember where you come from. Um, you know, Rads, Scheme. You know those kids. What up to my what up to my boys Tama and, and Big George over there and Masterton Bad Habits crew. <laughs> Just beginning their journey. Um, you know Trick Trick and uh, the Linden and Tawa connection. You know the MOE squad and um, I think all those kids we we worked with as well. Raw, you know. So you know I love Wellington City. And I think it's important to support all those young fellas so that they understand the relationship between the OGs and the BGs and the young fellas, you know? If the OGs give time to the young fellas, then the young fellas are always gonna have respect and, and show love to the OGs. And that's what's kind of missing, is an area where the young fellas can come into a space with the OGs and the, and the old school fellas and share and network and build together and then we won't have the problem of, oh, you know, the OGs think they know better. Oh, those young, those new school motherfuckers, they don't listen. You know, and that's what the kitchen was so good for. We had a space where we were all equal. And we could go in there and be ourselves, and Coz was all good with that. As long as you had a bottle of, or a box, and you brought your cypher skills, you were allowed to come to the kitchen. Coz was very picky about who came into the circle. I had so many friends I tried to bring into the circle over a long fucking period of time that sometimes Coz was like, nah, can't bring those fellas. So, you know, there was those T's and C's as well. But overall, you know, Wellington's vibrant city when it comes to rap shit. So much talent. Paulus, CPC crew. DJ extraordinary as well. Bit of a B-boy, you know. That's how, you know, it's <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, like our city, you know, what up to DJ Mickey over there in Australia? What up to my man EA Cut, DJ Gooda? You know, this is the young generation that we fuck with. And I think that's why we, we're successful with what we do, Raw, because we, we spend time with the young fellas. We give them an opportunity to be who the fuck they want to be. And we support that, and I think that's important. Yeah, because I was in a lot of those cyphers. <laughs> but uh, what used to crack me up was that how you guys used to like uh, practice the way you play. So you know it was pretty brutal sometimes. Yeah. And, uh, some people weren't used to that. Uh, you know, take offense. Yeah. And they, were, they were just like, you know, just like out Yeah. Yeah. Well. It was, and Cos set the bar really high because Cos was the bar, don't forget. You know, people forget about how dope Cos was and how dope Shogun was and how dope Bali Cabana was. You know, the focus was always, oh, you know, flows this and flows this, but I never thought that. I always thought, nah, bro, you know, the fucking guys that you guys should be listening to and watching, Cosmo, because Cosmo, he was our guy. He was the guy that we looked to. So our bars were always, you know, I didn't, bro, I tell you the truth, I didn't even under fucking understand bars, to be honest with you. I, mean, I came from the fucking streets. So a lot of the stuff that the boys knew, like metaphors and punchlines and similes, I didn't even fucking go to school. So I didn't even know what that shit was. I just rapped off, like, with all my heart and all my fucking everything. And because Cos was our, our guy, I tried to mold my style into that hip-hop, but I didn't really know it, like... You know what I mean? You know what I mean, eh, Raw? Yeah, yeah. Cos uh, had a lot to do with language and uh, uh, his reader, his intellect as well. You know? He's an in intellectual motherfucker, you know? He taught me a lot of sh a lot of good shit, Cos. And that's the bar. So Cos was always the bar. And then, you know, my man Shogun, man, Shogun was ill with the fucking the raps. Same with K1, Indigenous Son. Same with Del C and my brother Ali. And people forget about my boys and their contribution. We wouldn't have got to this motherfucking level 
if it wasn't for the team working the team effort. And then we had the baddest motherfucking DJ and producer, DJ Raw. Like, <laughs> it was like God blessed us, you know, he gave us, you know, the king gave us this opportunity and we just ran with it. And a lot of the time I didn't even know shit about it. But, you know, like Cos said, without heart, everything falls apart. And that's, that's real talk. Yeah. Where's the product? Where's the product? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it must have been uh, almost eight years yeah. of uh, live shows before. That's why we were so good. That's what I believe anyway. We had uh, mastered our craft coming from the foot solos. Remember how we first started? We had the double bass guitar, the DJ, and we did our first show at Sub 9. I remember that clear as yesterday. And there was no one there, but that was our first show. And I won't ever forget that motherfucking moment. But from there, that progression, slowly Cos started booking us shows. Slowly we were practicing every day. Slowly we started to see the vision. Slowly Cos was like, yo, building blocks. And then boom, motherfuckers was like, yo, you seen those fellas perform? And we perform eight years straight, no product, until to, from 1994, 95 to 2001, when we released Styles Deliveries Flows. What up, Dilly Brown? Too much records. Yeah. What up, dude? I love you, bro. Peter Costa Dallas. You know, just when I first when we first met Peter, we were playing pool at La Luna. Carlos introduced me to Dulu. You know, I looked at him like, oh man, you know, who the fuck is this motherfucker? And Carlos was like, oh, this is my bro, bro. He's a good follow piece, you know. I was like, okay, we played pool. And I already kind of like didn't like him and he beat me at pool too. So I was even more spewing. <laughs> I was even more like, oh, I don't really like this dude, eh? And then we became the best of friends, just years of toil and hard work. And I seen him, you know, just always show love to the boys, always put his heart on the line for us, put his best foot forward for us. And I seen that and I do Lou Brown is his family, bro. Too much records. Can't hear raw. He just um, he's got a little bit of a tech issue with raws. Oh, there we go. Back on. Oh, he's got a little bit of a tech issue with raws, Mike. But um, I got some batteries over here, David. Yep, they're charging right here. They're um, chargeable ones as well. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Shout out to everybody who's um, live with us tonight. Uh, look for the pre-order in the um, in the in our stream for iTunes and uh, Apple Music. You can uh, pre-order the album now before midnight. We're currently sitting at number eight, and we're trying to push the, uh, the album to number one. Shout outs to my team, uh, Rod Two. Annie and Brother D and what up to Johnny Chong Nee and Chris Chitlin and DRM, Apple Music and iTunes Music. What up to Flash Dog Studios and, and Bria, David Hamilton, Scott Mulligan, our producer Sin, our man on the decks, uh, DJ Paulus and my OG right here, DJ Raw. What up to Cosmo163, Wellington Kingpin and what up to the Foot Soldiers, my family. Everybody tuned into the stream. Thank you so much for supporting and showing love. How's my mic here? You feel? No? 
Just do you wanna play something with me? Just bring a little intermission. I'll be with you for a couple of minutes. Go to the artwork. Dreadlocks and afros, best to roll that up. Cause Fiesel, meet up on Beach Street, pick up roaring seafood on corner, mix down alley. Club hop to catch the best tunes in town. Rounds on exhibition, bliss, another soundtrack, throw it in the breeze. Hope it circulates and gathers some of these lady friends. That's all I want. Gonna invade your space to meet your seam independent at your own pace. That's your own pace. They're walking deep, they're walking like they're just too much. Styles for y'all, you bust as best to jump the wall. They're talking streets, foot soldiers, strategies too much. Flows for y'all, you drop in like a ball. You're looking lovely. You by far the sexiest queen. Hurry, make a move. Eyes fixed, sticking like glue. Cleavage at my scope. From ear to toe, midsection to your pelvic bone. Imagine her moans, curling her toes, screaming my name. She picture perfect in my frames, elegantly in every way. Fine complexion, hair in braids. She cutting edge like razor blades. What in the mill? My heart is racing. Tell it to chill. I'm sick of chasing mindless conversations. Foot soldiers, strategies too much. Those for your own, like a spell. Styles for you. Two, two, two. All right. Let's go. Go. Yeah, we back. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, let's talk about some of the the artists that we've worked with or you've worked with over the. We have worked with. We've worked with. Oh, we were, I mean, Top Soldiers formed twenty six years ago, so it's a long time, man. You know, um, long time being relevant, bro. <laughs> but uh, you know, <laughs> and it did. I mean, there's people that have come and gone, and there's people yeah. that are still relevant, still doing their thing. That's right. Uh, so, 
yeah, who, who are some of the, the people that we collaborated with? Yeah, but uh, maybe outside of Wellington because yeah, yeah. downtown, perfect track. Yeah, Shea Fu, Famospheric. Shout out to the OG Shay and Famospheric. Um, that connection was through you and Cos. You know, you guys. I remember sitting down at the table at Causes and you'd take me to Causes and I'd be sitting there and Shafu and Damn Native and all these superstars would walk through the door and I'd be like, what the f***'s going on here, bro? <laughs> you know? Yeah. I remember those days clear as like they were yesterday. Um, so that was a great, that was an awesome collaboration, you know? Um, don't break the flow, you know? Some of the Foot Soldier songs and the videos we shot over the years, you know, we always had people involved from different parts of Aotearoa, like you, we had Ehrman and SNL from FDKNS, and one of my other guys, Daniel, you know. Um, one of my other guys, Daniel, Norm's brother from FDKNS too, refused. Um, you know, come down and, and supported us. Dallas Tomita from uh, Fat Freddy's Drop got my eye on you. Um, we collaborated with uh, Dulu and uh, I remember the lady. Remember the lady, the, the old lady that helped us, and her daughter's a you know real famous actor now. Jean Jean Gale. Hey, Dulu, Dulu. You remember who? She, Dulu, Dulu. Sorry, man, Fire through the name, bro. So we fucking we can remember who she was, Dulu. It's like a, it's a quarter of a decade. Um. You know, Decepticons, Savage, Mareko, Devolo, and Nalfris, you know, our guys, Scribe. Four Corners. Was four Corners. Big connection there. You know, H Four Town. Corners, H-Town, Mega B, Mega B yeah. Kuma, uh, the Flax Roots boys, Freeman, Fatu, um, Smoothie, um, Hippoglyphs. You know, our journey started with those guys back when we did that show at the Groovin. Remember we went there? Yeah. And that motherfucker was like, I walked, well, I couldn't believe it. But the thing I really remember about our trip to Hamilton was, you know, when we showed up and it was like, fucking 10 or 20, like, you know, like they were deep. Hey, yeah. you remember? Yep. Uh, I started going up there a little bit earlier, like uh, with Gifted and Brown, the mm. orientations up there. Mm. Yeah, I, I seen uh, Omega B and uh, Rick Rush and all those guys back then, and they were, they were, they were tight then. Mm. But this, that Four Corners like the second generation, you know? Yeah. Of, of hip hop. And Waikato Oi. Yeah. Well, you know, we started a special relationship from that show, from the groove and, you know, Koma. Um, you know, the OG from Waikato, you know, part of the villains. What up to the villains? That's our that's our fans too. You know, all the boys up there, Maddie Clark, Hutz, you know, those are our guys. NI, General, you know, um, SMV, um, Hippoglyphs, what up Hippoglyphs? Um, and Freeman, you know, Freeman, Freeman was the bully. Why can't you? It was, it, it was that motherfucker walk in the room, everybody would be like, Jesus Christ, Jesus God, I see you, the fuck is this? Um, yeah, so you know, that Groovin' show started a special relationship with H-Town Hip Hop, and that relationship is still heavy to this day. Because those guys always just walk <laughs> down. Big connection with the B boys. Big connection with hip hop. That's uh, hip hop, should they rule? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were they connected with Sarah, Specs, and Curb, and, and Juice, yeah, yeah. and you know, Swerve One. What up to Curb? What up, Curb One? What up to Swerve One? Our OGs. You know, peace and love, bro. Always love and respect, yo. Um, Lavina Williams. Remember that collaboration we did with your, your guy, DJ Cool Cut? Cool Cut. Yeah. You know, that was uh, Mike, Young. Mike Young, you know, you hooked that up raw. We, we did a great collaboration with Lavina and just recently got in, in contact with Lavina again. 
talking about a collaboration, a 220, you know, 2020 or 2021 collaboration. Yeah. Um, I think that'll be special. That'll be cool, you know. But, uh, you know, I've even collaborated with guys that people don't even know, you know, young fellas from the city and all over the country. That's what it's like when you're in this rap shit. You just, you, every, every time you, you get an opportunity to write or record or get in the booth with another MC, I utilize that time as a time to get better. Whether they're in the caliber of my boy Scribe and Mareko or they're in the caliber lower than that, I can <coughs> go down to their level and chill and hang and and try to empower them and make them better. <laughs> yeah, networking was the one back back then because I think uh, like shout out to Shay, he's always had yeah. the boys back. You know, he's but up star come through for us. Uh, I met Shay back at um, when I was traveling with uh, Gifton and Brown. He used to come to um, what was it called to the. Where Manuel, Manuel Bundy used to play. I forgot it now. But, uh, base bar. No, it wasn't base bar. It was, it one in High Street, eh? Oh, it's just off High Street. Oh, Shortland Bar. Shortland Bar. So, yeah, he used to come to uh, Shortland Bar. That was when he was uh, in Super Groove. Yeah. Well, it might have been before. Just before he was. No, no. After uh, Super Groove. Yeah. But, man, so it goes way back. Uh, but yeah, he's got some good stories on us boys. Um, Man, you've got a close relationship with Manuel Bundy, eh? Like Submariner and all those boys. You did a lot of heavy work with those fellas over the years, eh, Raw? Yeah, well, it was a time when um, the DMCs were, weren't happening. And yeah. we were going up and down probably every three weeks doing gigs up there. Yeah. Uh, with Gifted and Brown. So that was, um, and Field Style was opening wow. all the shows for us. And slowly, uh, as Gerard did his own thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Rest in peace, G. Rest in peace, uh, G, man. <coughs> yeah. We started getting a, a formula happening, you know what I mean? Between me, Kaz, and, and Caps. So. Overstayers? Overstayers, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that, Raw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be into <laughs> We're switching the roles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Overstayers was just a. Uh, like a jam we just just every time we went away and Kaz was with us we were just hanging and, and, it's and a natural stuff. yeah natural progression yeah yeah but uh i love remember you remember the fire engine yeah. demos i think they native have stole that song because <laughs> they used to oh, do it live <laughs> they got our life we move yeah, yeah. fire engine coming down my neighborhood yeah, yeah. we're on a roof there's no split i catch me head I smell something burning. Fuck, bro. I remember that shit like yesterday, G. I'm sure I got the demo somewhere. Uh, bro, I, I, I fucking, I'll fucking I'll split that shit for you right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's just like hanging, you know what I mean? Just like how football just came about. Came about. It was just hanging. Like I used to catch up with cars on the weekends and, and have a drink and catch up because everyone else had moved to Auckland. Kaz had moved to Auckland. Yeah. Caps, Caps had moved to Auckland. Yeah. Uh, Gerard had gone. I was doing film work and Cos was doing clothing design. Yeah. Just right next to the studio where I worked. Yeah. So he used, always used to come over and yeah. So it's just keeping keeping up the networks, relationships, you know. Just keeping building, eh? Yeah, yeah. There's layers to this shit, there's levels. Yep. Well, let's I mean, let's talk about that rule. Like, um, you took me to Cos One Six Three's place. Yeah. So I think we originally met just from playing basketball. Yeah. So basketball and then the outdoor street ball was our shit, eh? Yeah. Those Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Remember those Brooklyn fucking battles we used to have back in the days? Yeah. Caps. Well, Joe Smith. Yep. Yeah. Everybody. It? Was it a tournament? Tony Harong of Brooklyn, the Brooklyn tournament. Oh, yeah, yeah. But even before the Brooklyn tournament, we were there always. Yeah, every sunny day. Every sunny day. That was the court. Brooklyn school. Mm -hmm. Joseph Smith, Tony Harong, all the bad ballers used to go up there and play. Oh, Kana. Kana Binion. Oh. What's up to my boy Kana? Yeah, Michael yeah. Boyd. Michael 
Shout out to my boy, Michael Boyd. Oh, yeah, it was the same. Um, That's the way our relationship started. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, Caps knew you before I knew knew you. And Caps used to come to my house, uh, knocking on the door, waking school, asking me if I could show him how to DJ, so. Yeah. And I had just left school, so I was just just out of school. What up to King Caps? OG, what up, Wolves? Much love and respect, bro. You know. Gotta be consistent. You gotta do the yards. So that's the kind of um, that's the kind of like genre we're we're involved with. They also, it's not like every other genre. You reckon? Every other genre um, is pretty different to hip hop culture. Yeah. We take I mean, from every other genre and make their shit cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and isn't that right? Hip hop fucking culture. We we sample that shit and make that shit heat. Yeah, bro. Um, oh, let me let, let's let's read some comments. What up, Shay? What up, Star? There's, uh, quite a few people in there. Ah, a lot of motherfuckers up in here. Hey, what's up to everybody uh, supporting the stream tonight? Showing love, man. Thank you so much. Um, the link to the pre-order is in the stream. You can go right there now and buy it and pre-order the album now. It drops tonight at midnight. And this Q&A is, I don't know, it's just a moment for us to just share and just just chill and kick it with our peoples and put the OG raw here. Shout out to our people behind the camera, uh, our producer, Sen, uh, you know, our DOP, David Hamilton and Flash Dog, our team, Dr. Scott Milligan. Yeah, wow, bro. Yeah, man. So, oh, just going back to the project and everything that's happening now. Yeah. Uh, is there any other shows or other streams that you're working on? The next um, <coughs> couple of releases, you want to talk about the next uh, tracks that drop? Yeah, so, um, as you know, Rick, uh, Raw, we've been working with Ricky Paul, producer from uh, Kowuro. Yeah, that guy's got so many beats, man, that's crazy. It's like a never ending story. <laughs> the never ending story. Yeah, bro. Like they all dope too. <laughs> he's a fucking he's a he's a he's a special talent, you know, like uh when he came around home and, and played me some of his stuff, I just got fell off my seat all night. I think we had that conversation. Mm. Um so I'm working with Ricky Paul. Um, on a project, an, an, an album to follow up from the King of Wellington yeah. and Cigar Music Catalog. But we also, we also got this real special project that I haven't really told many people about, but I'm gonna share it tonight on the stream with everybody. Um, we got a project called the Poly Panthers coming up as well that we're working on with Poetic and uh, Andy, my management. It's a special project because, um, you know, Poetic is a young man who's really uh, leading the way for Pacific Islanders and poly, our poly people over this way mm. and really works hard and he's been building his vibe. And, you know, we're on the same roster, so we're teammates, you know. Um, the Poly Panther project is we, we're gonna empower our people. We're gonna do something special, something that hasn't been done before. And the project is called The Mo. Shout out to my guy, Cos, you know, the OG, who is the original Mo. Cosmo and uh, 163 and uh, Kaz and Fieldstar Orator. They are the original Mo. Um, and, you know, I have to show love and respect to the OGs because that's hip hop, that's that's us. And so basically what I'm trying to say is Poetic and myself, we're the new mole. We're the new representation of the mole. And that's a project that we're about to go into. So there's three projects, including Poetic's projects that he's working on right now, his album 
and what he's working on, he's working real hard in the studio right now. So we got a lot of work, um, and it's honest work. It's good mahi. We're working with the best guys. We got Ricky Paul on the decks, on the beats. Uh, Brother D is, is a part of this process as well. I'm about to uh, experience, you know, something new with uh, those guys going to the studio and work. And you know, Raw, are you gonna come with me? Because that's just that's just what's gonna happen. That's that's how it is. I'm trying to get calls over here so we can share the experience. But yeah, you know, we got some really exciting things coming, and um, it's 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 fuzzy to share it here with everybody because you know, like, I don't really I don't really share much with people. I just keep my shit to myself and work hard and and try to get things off the ground in an organic kind of manner. You know. And I just had a flashback when you were talking about the mo, the mo, uh, uh, the field style. Um, do you remember the anthem when we shot the video? Mm. We shot in my kitchen. Yeah, and I then, do. Uh, I think it was George Nippier cutting the grass with a machete. Yeah, that he jumped down. And, oh no, it was he cutting the grass? Yeah, and, and did it like. But a do you remember the opening expert. scene? <laughs> do you remember the opening scene? <laughs> the the, the uh, oh, Chappelle. Oh, the plane. We shot the plane. Yeah, yeah. And then straight to the oven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Man, bro. I, I climbed over the barrier and filmed the, um, the plane going over. And then we... Oh! <laughs> He's playing it right now. That's crazy, huh? I borrowed it. that shit up. And that was all shot on film, too. And, uh, I borrowed it. And then we had to chase the film. Film reels. Oh. <laughs> my my been on the grass. Yeah. And then we had uh, Doug up at uh, Strathmore. Yeah, so we one stuff. doing that. Yeah. Uh, the cardboard. That was a great shot on the dolly, eh? Yeah, yeah. We got a dolly for that. Man, what year was that? Fuck. That was like 90. 96? Yeah, whoa. <laughs> I was still in school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was wagging school that day. Dave, we were wagging school that day. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, just told me about those times. Took me back. Um, but that's the, that's the stuff we did, you know? No one else was going to do it for us. We didn't have budget. We just got enough for the film and we borrowed a camera and that was it. But, um, yeah, man. What else? Who else is on there? I'm just having a look, bro. I'm just being nosy. But, um, shout out to everybody who's tuned into the stream. Uh, the pre order link is in the, uh, in the stream. Click on the pre order link. Go and buy it and pre-order our, our the new project King of Wellington right now. Briani Gabbana and Rap Life, the new singles. Um, we're trying to push the project into number one. Um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we managed to secure uh, number one on the New Zealand charts for the pre-order, but also number one on the international charts, which is blew me away. Real thankful and real blessed, real humble. But um, right now we're sitting at number eight in the New Zealand top 20. Fuck, bro, I'm blown away. Humble, you know what I'm saying? Um, but you can't do great things without a great team. And um, that's, that's uh, you know, raw. Yeah. I've played team sports all my life and uh, I know about that team etiquette, you know? I think you're in a good position at the moment. Like you've got a, some experienced people uh, manage, managing, uh, you know, giving yeah. you timelines yeah. when you do it yourself, you know, it's like- uh, Not as, not as- you, you tend to push things back and go, oh no, I'll do it another day. Artist or, temperament. Yeah, yeah. So I think, I think- What uh, up to Andy, what up to my guy Andy Subbles? You know, because, I think this game, looking back, you know, when uh, you were doing your album, we had like 80, at least 80 songs, you know, and you're still trying to write new stuff, so. I'll tell you a story. Um, 
I tell you a story because it's important for people to know the relationship I have with DJ Roar and the respect I have for my bro. DJ Roar has been our producer since day dot for Solars, including myself. And um, Roar's talking about this album in the heart of the city, which is my first solo project. We recorded 80 songs. And those 80 songs, we narrowed down to I think 10 songs, 11 songs. But in that time frame, like I really pushed the boundaries with Raw. I was partying hard and fucking around and you know, I was on some fucking party and bullshit. Wouldn't show up on time to the studio. Raw was always calling me, yo, where the fuck are you? I was like, yo, I'm on my way. Wouldn't show up for hours because I was fucking around, trying to be a Mac daddy, trying to be the fucking man, the woman and shit, you know what I mean? And um, every time I go back into the studio, I change songs. Like Raw would be, yo, this is the song. And I'd be like, ah, oh, nah, I want to change it. I'd go back and write a whole new fucking song, come back, yo, this is the song, and Raw would be like, bro, fuck, we already, we already got the fucking song. Eventually, Raw kicked me out the fucking studio. My OG. It was one of those moments where I was like, like when I, when Carl's left Wellington City, I fucking, you know, that was the moment when I was like, yo, you either fold like a fucking bitch or you keep pushing and progressing and you go back and you show the OG's form. That's my honest fucking, that's real talk. I was like more afraid of failure than I was of success. So when Raw kicked me out of the studio, that was like a moment in my life when I was like, yo, motherfucker, you either you're gonna get your shit together or the fucking dream's over. Raw, that's real talk. That moment really defined a lot of things for me. You know, when you kicked me out of the studio, you know, like my older brother, my OG, the guys that I look up to. When that happened, I was like, fuck. You know, I could have just thought, fuck it. <clears throat> fuck this rap shit. And, bro, you know, I had to. Yeah. Uh, I think after trying to do your own uh, label and all that stuff, I think you understand. <laughs> yeah. What the issues were back then, but yeah, yeah. that was a cool moment though, because I learned so much, you know. Yeah. You know, I learned so much in that moment. That moment is what got me here too, bro. You know, you know, not just that that moment with my brother and cause, but that moment with you too, bro. You know, spent a lot of time with you and the wife and Marcus and the kids, you know, over the years and. That shit really means a lot to me, bro, you know? When people show form and show love, you either, you either fold or you, you play the game and you say to yourself, okay, these are the variables. Fucking, let's, let's go, let's deal with it and, and move on. And that's, so I really valued that, that, that experience. It was straight up, real talk. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't nothing personal, man. Nah, just, nah. I guess it was tough love. At, at it's that time. And, yeah. and that's what I needed. Also. Yeah. That, that's how Ben I crew, you can't. There's people that just take, you know what I mean? Go give and take. Gotta give. And that's what the king means, also. King of Wellington, I'm not on some ego shit, I'm just saying, like, to be a king, you gotta be willing to serve first, you know, that's, that's, you know, I, we contributed so much, you know, so when people say, oh, bro, why the fuck do you think you're the king, it's like, well, you know, bro, we gave more than we took, you know, we took, I took a lot as a young fella, but I, I turned that negative into a positive, and, that's why we're here now, you know, this is our, this is our blessing, so, we just gotta, 
be ready to roll with those punches when they come. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to say, yeah, man, I'll just do a quick shout out to um, all the old school uh, Wellington battle DJs, the big, big part of the scene back word in the day. Up, uh, word kept, up, word up. Uh, as one of our stronger scenes, actually, the B Boys were strong, but the Wellington DJ uh, battle DJs, it was a, a tight community, strong. I think uh, even Sen was uh, in one of the battles back in the day. Sen's the <laughs> Sen's fucking Sen made the fucking Back to Basics magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking, uh, oh Nevsky, GND, those up guys, GND. those guys uh, had a. Had a Pretty mean following back in, in the day too. Shout out to GND, Naivsky, it's my guy. Uh, Dan, Gene, and, and the rest of the crew. What a, Sandra, down there in High Tide you know. Gotta show love, you know, that's, that's the key to this hip hop shit, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Exciting times for Wellington City. How's everybody out there? Anybody got any questions for me? What up to Muff Dog? What up to Peter Barrett? Perceive Muff Dog. You remember Muffy? Yeah, man. Dead. What's the trick? <laughs> HB Pencils. Oh, Bone oh, Gristle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Play that, please, uh, DJ Soundwave, <laughs> if you can, sir. If you have it. Yeah, man. See, there's a lot of those tracks that never came out here. Nah. Yeah. Exciting though. Savage. Savage was on there. Yeah. T Graphic. Tommy Graffiti. Yeah. Even yeah, my stuff. Yeah. No, I never released it. Man, that album. Even was... Downtown well, has never been released. <laughs> we could release it now. Digital is. That's the new. That's the new hustles. Digital. We're like... getting ready to digitalize the Foot Soldiers album and remaster it. What up to uh, DRM and uh, Andy? They want they want to make that happen, like remaster the Foot Soldiers album and re-release it. I just sent all our fucking remember all those CDs we got. Also, I just sent them all back to DRM. They get rid of the hustle them for us. Nice, man. straight hustles. <laughs> that's fucking buzzy. Like that's buzzy. Like you know, for that. Oh, bro, it blows my mind. Like. Those motherfucking things be sitting in my motherfucking shed for, and your shed, remember? Yeah. The original storage, Dulu. And now I got a call like, yo, ship all those motherfucking CDs back to the, we can, we can, we can get ready to remaster that shit, digitalize it, we can ready to pop those motherfuckers out. Like, what up? Exciting. So, oh, yeah, streams of it. Uh, everyone's on lockdown, I guess, like yeah. uh, up in Auckland, there's no shows happening, so you got anything planned for like a actual like a album release stream? Yeah, so <laughs> next week, Saturday? Next week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Check my calendar. <laughs> next week, Saturday, uh, with DJ Raw, and DJ Soundwave. <laughs> And our producer said <laughs> we're gonna be live streaming uh, the release party because uh, we couldn't get a release date for tomorrow. So you know that's that was why we decided this Q and A was perfect for people to tune in. And, you know, um, so next weekend we are gonna live stream uh, a party for everybody uh, out there on COVID and lockdown from uh, a place in Wellington City, which is run by a friend of ours called Carl. And uh, the, what's the audio place called? It's uh, Audio F. Yeah, Slash Audio for, for car installs and all that stuff. But Audio F do uh, big PA systems, you know, lighting, the works. So we're the AV company. Yeah, so what up to our guys, uh, Carl and, and, and the boys down there. So we're going to be streaming a live uh, release party from um, from that location next Saturday and then September the 17th we've got the official release party here in Wellington and um, we'll let you know about that uh, those details next week at the live stream 
Yeah. Auckland is on lockdown right now. We had plans to hit Auckland, but um, until we know um, what's going on there, we we'll let everybody know what's going on. Just thinking back to the hip hop summits, because they were pretty cool, man. Like, there's, there's a bit of a lack of uh, representation at the, at the big festivals and that now. Does everybody remember the hip hop summit, Anthem? Oh, Anthem. So, that was a huge track back in the day that you were on. Yeah. Summit like Anthem. My record, Scribe, myself. And I think uh, Ali, you say this was the, the producer and beat maker for that. Brother D was on there too. Yeah, it was huge. Big time. Remember we had the whole Queen Street and the whole fucking Altier Square packed. Yeah. And I think was that the weekend when the licks was over here? Because I mean, could've, yeah, could have been. You could've know, been like fuck, that was a huge weekend. And remember we did the after party at their place. Yeah. Man. We got. Cos got arrested that night. <laughs> Cos got arrested that night. He was. He, Cos was trying to be the man with his whiskey bottle down on the fucking Queen Street. We're walking down that bitch. Hey, walking down that bitch, Dave. And all the boys. Cos like, yeah, hey, man, fuck. Next minute, we're standing in the corner. And this cop just fucking rushes out of nowhere. Hey, mate, you're under fucking arrest. Cos like, man, fuck you. And, and straight up, the cops like, man, fuck you. You're under arrest. <laughs> Fuck, that was, you know, one of those moments, Dave, where you're just like, you know, the boys are just so excited. We just had a, all, you know, great weekend and and we're all off to the after party and Auckland City's a different beast altogether. It's not like Wellington, it's like a totally different place, you know, you gotta be careful up there. Now, cause uh, I was just thinking about all those artists that were, um, at the hip hop summit, well, well, all of them actually, because the first one was awesome there in Christchurch. That was like the first real sort of uh, nationwide connection. Like, yeah. Decons. And I saw Chris Graham's little doco series, and I just thought, man, where's everyone else? There's so many other people that could have been involved. I, I know he's uh, hitting the mainstream ones, the ones that had commercial success, but um, I thought they're native. Uh, and the decons, all of those guys, they should have had something in there. But, uh, yeah, yeah oh, man, it's, but, that's fucked up. I'm not really, I'm not really happy with that shit, but you know, it is what it is, yeah. you know? I, I just thought for some of them, they, they were um, special days, you know? Shout out to um, Ali and Severe, yeah, Severe, yeah. Severe, making this stuff happen. Do you remember the first summit we went, we all, we flew down to Christchurch, it was like our first official, like, trip like where someone had paid for our flights and we had accommodation and you know it was like a special moment where the boys were like Paul said, oh wow we're flying the whole we've been driving you know on on the road for six or seven years and then all of a sudden someone rung us up and they're like yo you are flying down to Christchurch we've got to use a hotel and, and you're going to get paid and and <coughs> you're performing and, and I was like fuck this rap shit we, on, you know, <coughs> and look, I'm gonna share a story, all right, about that some that some that I've never shared with anybody. Only my boys know this motherfucking story. Okay. When when we left to um the Christchurch, I ended up taking like a pound of motherfucking weed down the Christchurch. And I put it in this motherfucking bag and I gave it to Cos. <laughs> Cos didn't even know what was in the motherfucking bag. Cos was like, yeah, cool, I'll carry a few feet. I was like, yeah, cool, sweet oils. Cos carried the motherfucking weed on the plane and the whole plane was like, what the fuck is that? You know, we got off the plane down in Christchurch. Cos walking through the airport, he didn't even know what the fuck. Sorry, cause love you, my OG. We end, up, yeah. we end up back at this Marae in Christchurch, and um, in the Marae, it's all of Waikato hip hop, all of Auckland Dawn Raid, all of Wellington hip hop, 
and it's a big ass fucking marae and I grab the bag off cars and I look for the fucking roof because I'm trying to dry my fucking pound and I put the fucking weed in the roof and that whole week that we're there everyone's like man can you smell that shit and I'm like I can't smell shit you know <laughs> It stunk the whole plane out. Stunk the whole plane out and the, and, uh, and the whole marae out. And <laughs> while everybody was at the show, everybody was get. I was at the marae spotting up on the knives in the marae and the boys were coming through like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? I'm fucking, this is a marae, my bro. I was like, bro, we're at fucking King's College in the middle of fucking Christchurch. This isn't a marae. This is a marae. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is a marae, okay? Only, you, only lots of parkia European kids stay here. That ain't a fucking real marae. Moral of the story is, I did some really stupid shit. But the Hip Hop Summit was like a momentous time, uh, like a, a time in our timeline where we had our first flights, we had our first like accommodation paid for. We flew down there and we tore that motherfucker to pieces. But it was also the first time we met Scribe. First time we, we seen Decon. First time I seen the Decepticons on stage, I was like, who the, f who the fuck are these kids? <laughs> who the fuck is this kid? You know, Miracle was like curling it all. And I was like sitting in my seat, like, I couldn't believe it. I actually, I mean, I could believe it, but I was like, it was an amazing experience also. <laughs> Shout out to the Christchurch crew of Richie Broke. Richie Broke. Broke in danger. Who else? Uh, oh, Rick. Rick. What up to the Two Hornal crew that always supported us when we came down there, filmed us and everything, you know, like hospitality was always on. What up to Red? Mm. Red's the man down there. Yeah. He's cheap. So, you know, that, that hip hop summit, like, that's when I reconnected with Scribe and Malo, Lo Futsu. And, but I'd actually connected with Scribe back in 1993, 94, before he became a mega superstar because of his first cousins with the boys from the Ifti Kiani's graffiti crew. And when I was, um, when I got kicked out of Wellington in 1993, I couldn't get into no school in Wellington. I left Wellington and went to Auckland and I went to a school up there called Oduhi College and um, I met Malo at Humphrey's place at a friend's house that uh, I was real close with at the time and it was their first cousin. Malo showed up and uh, we started battling straight off the fucking bat, freestyle. Scribe, you know, the biggest motherfucker that's ever dropped here in New Zealand. <coughs> so prior to the Hip Hop Summit, I already had a relationship with um, my little, my guy. And to this day, we're still close and we're still tight as. Shout out to my man. Um, and people don't know that, you know, it's just a little share. Um, so, you know, like, it's hard not to forget those relationships and then later reconnecting with the bro at the Christchurch Hip Hop Summit and then seeing him evolve and becoming the biggest artist in Aotearoa. You know, bro, fuck, that's, that's amazing, you know? We got those family ties deeply embedded through hip hop. Yeah. I think I met Scribe when he was about 12 years old. Yeah. yeah he was telling me, like, he came and saw me later. He's like, oh, do you remember that mixtape you gave me? Yeah. Because uh, I did a, a filming job with uh, his dad, mm. with John and uh, Oli Maiava. Mm. We went around the whole country. Uh, shooting a, a corporate job. Fucking John was taking us to every gang path <laughs> yeah. in every city. But uh, and shout outs to um, OG John Lufutu. Yeah. But yeah, man. Nah. That's and Spix's father. Experience. What's Spix's father? Uh, Vic. Rick, Vic. Yeah, what's up to uh, Vic the OG and all the Christchurch family down there, the Smith family, and yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, man. Heaps of talent down there. Man, what a stream, eh? This is our, I just want to let everybody know this is our first, like, official stream. Before we even went live, like, you should have seen 
well, everyone was relaxed, but I was stressy like a motherfucker. And uh, now I feel, I feel fucking great. Let's see what people are saying, Will. DJ Freeman. Freeman, where's Freeman? Ah, uh, he's, he's in Waikato, that's what I heard. Man, that guy used to come. Turn up to my door with the video camera rolling. <laughs> Straight in. Oh, do I scratch? <laughs> have, a, have his camera ready. But that guy always looked after us. Yeah. Didn't want us to stay at a hotel. Uh, Wanted us to stay with him. The biggest bully in fucking New Zealand was... <laughs> he loved cars. And that's, that's why we were all good. <laughs> the biggest bully in New Zealand. He loved cars. That's why the foot soldiers were all good. That's real talk, bro. You know, KO, you, you can uh, you can uh, vouch me for that. There's some good gigs up in this town. Shall we um, should we play Free Ali or Rap Life or as a little uh, little promo? <laughs> So what up to everybody out there? The pre-order is uh, in our stream. Uh, Apple, to Apple Music, iTunes Music, and uh, Spotify. You can pre-order the, the album right now and uh, buy the new music tonight at 12 o'clock. The whole album releases. Shout outs to DRM and my guy Annie and the, the whole MGT team. And uh, you know, feel blessed and thankful. Shout outs to everybody tuning in right now. If you get the opportunity, get your husband's uh, credit card, get your mum's credit card, <laughs> get that new King of Wellington. I'll tell you, you're gonna love that shit. <laughs> Rap Life Live. <laughs> okay. Oh, Free Ali. I've got the. Um, I've got the beats, uh, I've got the songs on my, on my phone or we can, we can get them on the USB and upload them to Paulus to the DJA. Or just the freestyle, Jesus Christ, you ask a lot, Sin. <laughs> You're a needy man. <laughs> hey man there's still got quite a few people in the chat. Yeah, I'm buzzy, bro. The pop summit, bro. I, was still, I don't know. That was, I like talking about those times because it was, it was like the peak time of like hip hop in, in this country. Yeah, there, yeah. Was, there was a lot of other artists. What up to Upper Hop Posse? Our first uh, official number one. Yeah. Someone asked me a question the other day, and they said. They asked, was the first uh, rap battle in Wellington? Oh, I think it was severe. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, yeah. Like, you want the video of it? <laughs> oh, cares and, yeah, yeah. and um, yeah, back yeah. in the days? Yeah, yeah. So that's 84. Tavali and all those boys? I think 84 and 90. See, that's, a, that's the depth of Wellington hip hop, though. Mm. You know how we were talking about Kenny Mac mm. and those tapes? Like, you know, Kenny Mac spoke to me about going to Dr. John's and linking with TP and giving the tapes to him and then TP going to Exchequer, the nightclub, and doing his thing. And then that's where you guys connected with Reese B. Because people, people, people forget that Reese B is our original DMC champion from 88 or 89. And then you were 91, eh, Raw? Uh, Reese was in 1990, I was in 91. But I went to Dr. John's in, in 84. Yeah. Uh, when I stepped form. And Reese was DJ. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So it was like. Dr. John's was a nightclub that had lost its license. Mm. Uh, but they still had to pay the lease and all that stuff. So it was like you pay a cover charge and you're in there. Oh, okay. So 
there's older older people and there's there's young people. But it was the only only spot that was playing uh, like black music, basically, mm. or the latest American. <laughs> if you go to you the couldn't bar, drink there. You couldn't drink at Dr. John's if you went to the back bar. So yeah. yeah. So 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 Dave. So 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 Dave, check this out. So Kenny, Kenny McFadden was. He's the guy that coached Steve Adams, right? Now, Kenny told me that when they used to go to Exchequer Saints Club, there was a band there, and the band used to play really terrible music. So he said he'd go out and walk. He walked around the city to try and find a place to go and chill at, and he found Dr. John's, right? When he found Dr. John's, DJ TP, was playing music up in there, which was funky as shit, but you couldn't drink in there. So Mac used to say to me, so they'd finish their basketball games for the Exchequer Saints, they'd go to the main club of the Exchequers, Nick Mills's club, and Nick Mills is still around to this day. He owns fucking Spruce Goose down on Isle Bay. Multiple businesses, eh, Raw? That, that you've had the, the, the pleasure to work with alongside Nick Mills for a long time. And Max said they'd go to Nick Mills's bar in Lambton Key, Exchequers, drink because that's where that's where their sponsor was. Then they'd walk down to St John's with all these fucking basketball players, American motherfuckers, and they'd chill there and they'd listen to this guy, this Maori boy DJ TP, play sounds. And the manager had this little back bar at the back where he was like, "Yo, pour you a little bit of Jim Beam, a little bit of Jack, and that." Yeah. And when I heard that story, I had I ended up connecting it back to, which is Raw, is the DJ that ended up becoming a part of the Exchequer Saints nightclub with DJ TP and DJ Reese B. And they are the new, they were the new generation. You know what I mean? A hey, Raw. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So what Kenny said was that he told Nick to hire. Uh, TP. TP. So when I went to, ex uh, sorry, when I went to Dr. John's, that's what I, I'd been hearing about this guy TP. And then I got there and I saw Reese and I thought Reese was TP, but he had just like left probably a couple of months before I started going there. But yeah. uh, Reese was playing similar music, you know what I mean? And TP was the guy that Raw gave, uh, Mac gave the tapes to to play at Dr. John's originally. The birth of motherfucking hip hop in Wellington City was Raw and Reese B right there. Dean Harpeta. But the other thing that made it blow up was um, TP taking it to Active and yeah, starting the jam. Wow. The Wednesday night jam. Or uncut, uncut funk show, I think it was called back then. So that's the missing so piece. So they, play, they were playing the tapes on the radio. That's the missing and piece. Everyone was recording off the radio. Wow. Those tapes. That's the missing piece of the puzzle right there, Dave. Radioactive. And how long has Radioactive been alive right now, Raw? Like Wednesday Night Jam? Because right now, DJ Cube and Juice One. Must be going on 30 years Ooh. at least. 30 fucking years hip hop's been here. Jesus, cut IT. Mm -hmm. That's amazing, bro. Yeah, so. You know, I remember crews like Three the Hard Way, Double, Dry, Double J, Twice Just the T. Also, I remember those motherfuckers yeah. as a young fella. Pacific Descendants, yeah. OMC. When I seen those guys, uh, PD, live, and I was blown away. They yeah. had the best live show. Yeah. Oh, Sonny, yeah. Johnny. Johnny Disco. Yeah. They had dancers. Shout outs to uh, <laughs> Dave <laughs> Hamo and uh, Johnny Disco. They had dancers and Lava Lovers and, and Timberlands. I remember they used to have the, white, <laughs> the full white outfit. Yep. Yeah. White beanies and yeah. singlets and, and remember yeah. the old school uh, collar jackets? Yep. And then the white lover lover and the white chucks. Yeah. Shout out to Johnny Disco and uh and Day Hamo, the Sangala family. Word up to your contribution to hip hop. Yeah, man. Uh, that is they blew me away first time. I seen them. I seen them love. Just like they had it down here. The whole live show. Real entertaining. Yeah. yeah man exciting times what up to everybody tune in 
Don't forget to uh, pre-order and uh, click the link in the stream. We're trying to boost uh, from uh, number eight to number one. And this Q&A is just a session where we can talk and connect with people and so you can hear the story from the horse's mouth instead of third party. They're saying, uh, who's Dave? They want to see Dave. Oh, Dave. <laughs> Come out here, Dave. Come on. This is Mr. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Hamilton. Mr. Dave Hamilton. Come out here, sir. Flash Dog Studios here in uh, Wellington City, Oxford Street. Uh, great facility, great resource. Um, Free Ali wouldn't have happened without uh, the space that we're in right now. Pretty thankful to um, to uh, Flash Dog and you know Free, you know like I mean you pay for quality, but sometimes when you you pay for quality, like quality exceeds your expectations. You know what I mean, Will? Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty humbled and pretty happy and thankful. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, Urban Pacifica. Urban Pacifica. Man, that's like the, the original uh, independent, you know? Yeah. Crazy. Uh, shout outs to uh, Pauli Fuimana and um, Phil Fuimana. Those are the original uh, urban uh, Pacifica. What was that group? Um, uh, Manny J in it as well. Yeah. I remember, bro. I remember what they were called. That, that was early days. Yeah. Like, I remember seeing that shit though. Like cool just to see local people on TV. Yeah. Them and uh, like Adi Jump, probably the only other ones. CMMCs. CMMCs, yep. Yeah. Uh, Andy Van. Yeah. What was the name? Urban Disturbance. Is it? Yeah, same. Zane Low and uh, Ollie, and Ollie yeah, Rob Sammy. and um, Mark and Otis. Oh, yeah. Remember the? I mean, that was some crazy ass shit. I wasn't really into it, but it was just like. But those guys just, used to come yeah. down and network down here. Yeah, all the time, bro. Wellington had a fuck. That was like all those Auckland brothers. They loved Wellington. Mm -hmm. Remember, um, what was that old school club? Everybody performed there, but it shut down. Bodega. Oh, Bodega. Up the top of. Willis Street, eh? Originally. Yeah. Amazing. Murray, shout outs to Murray. There's another one called Naked Angel. Yeah. Naked Angel. Uh, I remember that place. I was only a kid when I used to go there. Fuck. My mama would have been spewing. <laughs> yeah, you know. I mean, that's, that's the journey, though. Like, I've had the pleasure to share the journey with some people who have uh, contributed amazing things to Wellington Hip Hop, you know? And I suppose that's why I'm still in it, that's why I still love it so much with a passion. Because it's more than just hip hop, it's a community, real people who have the same passion and the same love, you know? It's a culture, something that was created from struggle, that was created through people coming together and having the same struggles and the same belief system and, and, and understood the challenges but exceeded those challenges you know what I mean well like that's hip hop to me like, everyone told me nah you ain't gonna be shit you ain't gonna do shit with your life you that rap that hip hop that ain't shit and I was like nah bro I'm gonna show you we're gonna show you motherfuckers that and you know what I mean, Raw? Like, proving the haters wrong is the best feeling, Sin. <laughs> proving the haters wrong is the best feeling, bro. Straight. Bro, that's fucking real talk, bro. Well, bro, we've done a great job tonight. I'm really happy with yeah, you. fellas did an amazing job tonight. Yeah, I mean, I named myself. Um, flows came from, I say this real fucked up name when I first started rapping. I'm not even going to say it. 
<laughs> I wouldn't say it either. Shout out. <laughs> shout out to shout out shout out to DJ Sean. You know, DJ Sean is uh, a student of DJ Raw's, but also like my guy that I started rapping with. And um, DJ Sean and MC Scones. You know, MC Scones are like fucking, you know who named me that? King Carpisi. You motherfucker. That's like my old, that's like my older bro. You know, that's because that's his name was Brand Muffins. That's because his name at the time was Brand Muffins. He was like, bro, you should be scones. I was like, scones? Fuck. I'm a fucking, I'm a street motherfucker. Huh? I'm a fucking no motherfucking scone. But, you know, my boys tease me all the time about it. Because, you know, in Auckland, they call me Indy Kamozi. Or my homies up there. Or my bros up there, they tease me that, fuck that shit, you're Indy Kamozi. And I love that shit because that's that's part of, you know, the journey, you know, like those are the things that drive you to be better when your cousins and your older bros are like fucking you're only Kamozi, you're scones. I'm like, nah, fuck them flows. Fuck scones, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. So flows came about. Cause had a name for me, it was like, you're the grasshopper. I was like, grasshopper? I can't fucking be a grasshopper. <laughs> you know? And then I came up with Flows because the F is, uh, you know, Fiso. That's my real name. But Flows, like, because I didn't really understand hip hop like all the boys did, they knew about punchlines and metaphors and similes and anomalies and blah, blah, blah. All I knew was catch the flow on the beat. So Cos would be like, here's the beat. And then I'd listen to Cos rap and then I'd be like, oh, yeah gotta try and stay within the parameters of hip hop. Because I never really spoke about street shit. I never really spoke about what I was really doing with my life with the lads and the boys. I always kind of like, cause hip hop saved me. So I was like, oh, you know, so hip hop saved you. You have to be respectful to that shit. And, 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 and do it the way that cause and the boys did it. But I didn't really understand it. But I did understand flow like rhythms, like patterns, like the feeling. I understood that, I knew the swing. I knew how to, how to, like, everyone was on a one four, but I was like on a one five. I always try to be different from everyone. I never wanted to be the same. You know, people were saying words similar to everyone else. I was like, I don't want to say them words. People say, and, the, like this. I was like, nah, fuck that. I'm cutting that from my vocabulary. Cos taught me how to read books, so I upped the stakes on my vocabulary like that, but my, my music was always about flow. I, I couldn't fit into punchlines and metaphors because I didn't know that shit because I didn't go to school, bro. So all I knew was the feeling and the vibe and how to fit shit into the one four, but I never hit on the one four, the one, so here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I was always like, two, three, five, two, three, rough. You know, like that swing. And that's why my flow pattern is different from everyone else because I'm not looking for the one four, I'm looking for the one fifth and the one six. If you understand what I mean, Raw? Yeah. Like the beat. Yeah. It's like a drum pattern. You can fit so many things within that drum pattern but you have to choose where you hit on that drum pattern. So if motherfuckers is hitting on the 1-4, I'm like, nah, I'm not hitting on the 1-4, I'm hitting on the 1-5. I'm hitting on the 2-6. You know what I mean, Raw? Yeah. Hey, like like I a... Think, you, I you, think they call that dotted in uh, music theory. I see, I didn't even know that shit, <laughs> but I understand it here, and I understand it here, and I understand it here, so I stick to that. So when people are like, yo, yo, what's your latest punchline? I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck a punchline is, my G. But I know the vibe, I know the feeling, and I know the swing. Because the swing can start here, and it can swing all over to here, but you just gotta know how to make that fucking work. Before it goes back to here. <laughs> so besides local artists, like I know uh, Wu Tang was a big influence. Big influence. Uh, Fucking yeah. Method Man, Jizza, yeah, yeah. RZA, yeah. Killer Hill. Fuck. 
you know, Elvis. Royal Fam. Remember you used to play us Royal Fam? Yeah. That was my favorite shit. No one even was onto that shit. Goody Mob. Goody Mob when Sugar Outcast. Pop, Outcast. When, remember when Sugar Pop brought those albums to us from the States? No one had even heard it here in New Zealand. And he brought it fresh to us from Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, I will. <laughs> but that's rap, you know. We were we were listening to stuff that nobody else in the country was listening to. That's why we were the way we were. Everybody was listening to West Coast. We were tuned into Goody Mob. We were tuned into Atlanta. We were tuned into the East Coast because the East Coast is where out the river it really is. Ailes. Yeah, for sure. Wellington. Wellington is the East Coast of this motherfucker. Western. Yeah, co well, Coz. see, that's that's where I learned musical diversity. Like, Cos really taught me that. He listened to E40, Ice Cube, and and you know when I was listening to, to those fellas, I thought they were rapping about gangster shit, but they weren't. They were rapping about conscious shit about their community and about their people and what they were going through. But I didn't even realize that. I just heard "fuck the police" coming straight from the underground, and I was like, "Yeah, man, fuck the police, fuck those motherfuckers." But then when I really heard the song later, I was like, damn, they, they talking about something conscious. They're not really saying fuck the police. They saying fuck the principles that the police stand by. And that buzzed me out. Straight up. And then I heard Snoop Dogg. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was... What up to Shay? You know, Shay... I gotta share this with people. I gotta let them know, like, um, you know, Shay's a really close friend of my brother Ali Gabane. Like, like a lot of depth, it's deeper than what people see. And uh, I did a performance with Shay in Kinkapisi, I think last year at the Kaudangi uh, Festival. And um, I messed the performance up. I ended up drinking and, um, and just fucking the whole performance up. And Shane and Caps took me to the side and they said to me, bro, you know, like, what is it that you really want out of this music shit? Because you're a really talented motherfucker, but, like, you know, they didn't know I was on the piss, though. And I uh, went out there and I said some shit I shouldn't have said. And Shay was like, you know, bro, I'll put you on there. Just go out there and, and make a, you know, uh, a motherfucking impact because, you know, I believe in you. And I'll never forget that because I have to be honest, like that was part of the reason the King of Wellington came about too, was because, you know, Shay's really close with my brother. And when he told me that, he was like disappointed. I was like, damn, I let the OGs down. Damn, you know? That's real talk, also, like, and, um, and that's what really helped me too, like, get this project off the ground. That's real talk, bro. You know, Shay was like, bro, I'm disappointed in you. You know, I don't think you really understand the opportunity I gave you to be on the stage with Shea Fu and, and King Kapisi. Not everyone gets that opportunity and, and um, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for that. Actually, Shea is another one that should have been on that docker with uh, Chris Graham. Because he was like the, the first one to really play in this country. Like, uh, Chains. Man, he was he was selling out shows between national tours, like uh, uh, yeah, basically straight after Chains. And I remember uh, they did it in store at one of the record stores in, in Cuba Moore when it was packed out with the whole uh, Take Them Village. Take Them Village, man, another amazing crew, eh? What up to Ross Don, Hemispheric, King of PC and Shea Fu. Juice. Juice. What up to Juice, our guy, man, amazing producer. He was also the producer for Smash Proof, and they did big things. What up to the Smash Proof boys, Deech, Sid, and Tyree. Much love, brothers. Starlight Forum. Starlight Forum. We did the roots there, remember? We supported for fucking Black Thought. And uh, Cypress Hill. Cypress was there. Cypress Hill. Yeah. Remember we opened up a We toured with Cypress Hill. Yeah. 
We tour with Cypress Hill, Be Real, Sin Dog, and Muggsy. Muggs, bro, I tell you, some real rap motherfuckers. And you know the funny thing? There's been cars and Sin Dog seeing each other. I tell you, bro, you would have fucking, you would have buzzed out. It was like two OGs who didn't know each other but grew up in the same neighborhood. You know, with the Buya tribe and Carson and, and out there in, in LA. Cos has uh, got a rich history. Motherfuckers need to make a movie on my guy. Yeah, Cos grew up in uh, Samoa and went to Carson. Ran away from Carson, got in trouble, came to Australia, moved to New Zealand. And you remember that time he went back to, um, he went back to America. He got invited to do a, a, um, a speech at a university, eh? In New York, Dave. Cosmo got invited from a New York university to go and make do a fucking speech on Polynesian Pacific Island hip hop to a friend of ours called April. What up, April? Cos had left America on the run. So he got in trouble over there and flew over here to Australia and New Zealand to get away from the trouble he got into. 20, 30 years later, thinking that all of that stuff had cleared, he decides, he decides, he decides, he gets invited, he's like, shit. He's like, yo, I got a motherfucking invite to go talk at the university. I'm Malcolm X, motherfucker. <laughs> hey. He goes, flies, but you can't get into New York unless you go via LA. Flies into LA. Bro. There's <laughs> like a pool. Pulled up to the side. Next to him there's just like a, He's locked up. He's locked up in the fucking LA County. For a charge that he committed when he was fucking 13, 14, 15 years old. And he's locked up with real fucking gangsters and, you know? I remember... Bro. The story was pretty good. But it kept on getting bigger and bigger by the, <laughs> by the day. But man, yeah. He, we That's ended crazy. up getting him out. Hey, bro. Yep. Dulu. Shout out to Dulu and all the family. Ended up getting caused out of LA County. He, but he'd been there for like... Those weeks? Like 12 weeks, he'd been there three months, sitting in prison in LA, or maybe even less, maybe less. But eventually, the LA County contacted his family here in New Zealand. Dulu Brown and the boys were able to, you know, facilitate whatever he needed. And then he got out and, they, and he went to court and they, they cleared the charges. And he flew to New York. Yeah, they just threw it out, eh? Because it's They so threw old. it out because it was so oh, old. Yeah, it's, it's but it was arson. He burnt down a motherfucking, some fucking, you know? Real talk. Like, don't fucking hide the truth. Tell them. Because that's why Cause is the boss. And it came from, you know, the islands. And, you know, the struggle makes us, makes us strong. The struggle defines who we are as a motherfucking people, bro. Straight up, that's real talk, man. Cos was in the New York University, bro, talking about New Zealand hip hop, bro. Fuck. You can't get better than that. Just read in the comments, shout out to the Mount. Oh, Link's Ave. Oh, man, Link's oh, Ave. Uh, LA. All that crew up here. What up, Shan? DJ Shan. He just linked us to Link's Ave. Uncle Herbski. Rest in peace, Uncle Herbski. Bro, we built so many relationships through this hip hop. With just, just even just average people, like people that, you know, ain't even we built. And and we still here, bro. And that's, that's pretty buzzy, you know. But hey, man, we got to travel to see the whole country. Wow. Just from doing music stuff that we love, so. I got to see some shit I, I only dreamt of seeing all Hip hop has uh, blessed me with so much, you know, not just music and touring, but working on film sets and doing, you know, working as a stunt man, you know, like dreams as a kid. I was like, yo, I want to be an actor. 
I did motion camp on motherfucking Tintin, acting as the Thompson twins with uh, Jed, who's Peter Jackson's right hand man. And I'm a motherfucking coconut. I did stunt work on stuff that I ne I'd only dreamed of ever doing. And it happened, bro. And it was hip hop that took me there. It was straight up real talk. Mm. I think the, that's the buzz, eh? Like when you first have that moment where you, you're buzzing out just because you, you're doing something that you, you love and you're in a different uh, city or a different country or whatever. I know for DJing it was for me, but to even go out of town, go to Auckland for yeah. comp, you know. To fly somewhere and someone's paying for you, it's like, yeah. wow, it's buzzy. First time I went to London, it was, you know, it was freaking like, yeah. I can you imagine, bro. Is that for the DMCs? DMCs, 91. I actually went two weeks before the comp. I was Simon Greg, I was the OMC's old manager. He took me over. Awesome, man. Um, didn't have the right visa. So we meant to go to LA. He went to LA. I had to stay behind, go to the American Embassy the next day. Mm. Ended up getting okay, Hawaii instead. And then meeting him in, in London. And uh, I slept on the, I slept on the floor. <laughs> Had, uh, one of my things we do, the one things we do. Uh, friend's place because uh, he didn't have accommodation for me, so I just stayed with them. You know, went to the comp, no, nowhere to practice, just did my thing. And, but, you know, experience I'll never forget. You know, yeah. Just to go there, yeah, all everything paid for. Yeah. Yeah, something, you know, especially when you've been working on something for yeah. so long, yeah. it sort of pays off. You know, just like the shows. You know. We did some cool stuff. Yeah. The Vanuatu gig was, oh, man. was next level. I really enjoyed that experience with you, Raw. Yeah, yeah. The Carver yeah, was uh, pretty. Oh, you were the Carver King, man. You were the Carver <laughs> King, that fucking motherfucking trip. This guy was the Carver King, bro. I was like, what was the um? I These fucking drank the cup and I was like, I'm not gonna drink no more. This guy was like, What's the tea's name? That was looking after us. In the village. Ben. Ben. Remember, his, his family was like related to the, the, the queen of that particular village, his mother. Or but see the, the stuff we never experienced eh? like uh, they had a tight connection with Samoa at the village that we stayed at it was called Pango yeah, yeah, yeah. which was an extension of Pango Pango mm. and Pango Pango brought uh, religion and Christianity to their island and at the time Vanuatu was still heavily embedded in um, human sacrifice and eating people so Samoa and Vanuatu have a really close connection. You know, Samoa is like the middle of the South Pacific and the original people of the South Pacific. You know, we discovered the South Pacific in uh, Savai. So Samoa has a really special place in South Pacific history. And from that particular place in the middle of the South Pacific, we we pretty much filtered out into the rest of the South Pacific with the rest of the islands, you know, islands like uh, Little Tonga, you know, they have islands dedicated to Samoa. You know, Hawaii is an extension of Savai. You know, the same place. Cause, yeah, man, that was, that was cool, that, um, that area, because they had that whole... Savai is where they used to bury all the kings and the queens of the South Pacific. There's a river that runs through the Savai that uh, all the South Pacific queens and kings, they used to take them there. And you know, you ever watch that movie Brave? Oh, there's a movie, I can't remember what the movie is where they push the boats out into the ocean. That was, we're the original people of that. Just like Tongans are the original South Pacific Vikings. Tonga ruled the South Pacific for over 500 years, you know? So, we have a heavy history over this way that people don't know about. <coughs> I like that. Yeah. 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 Yeah
to have the same uh, how the Samoan missionaries came. With. A couple of them died. They were killed them, but the, the best ones were white missionaries and they ate them. What's the, what's the story? Yeah, well, you know, Vanuatu, yeah, that's right, all white missionaries went into Vanuatu um, and they ate them. They killed them and ate them, so. Um, just like Hawaii, you know, James Cook sailed into Hawaii and he tried to trick, uh, he tried to trick the local people and cheat them. And they killed him and they spread his bones and scattered James Cook's uh, bones throughout the island, you know. I've been to where, where they killed him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, people forget about uh, the s our South Pacific contribution as indigenous people in this particular part of the world. This is the last place that you see before you see the motherfucking South Pole or the North Pole, which is interesting to me, especially if you love history. Um... We have a heavy contribution over here in the South Pacific. Yeah. Which is important, you know? And it's part of our hip-hop culture mm. because one thing Cos taught me was, um, you know, this rap shit is one part, but in, uh, investing your own culture into it is where we're different from the rest of the world. So, you know... We could we could be just we could pretend we're American and just do what Americans do, and then but then the problem is is that Americans have already got everything, because those motherfuckers they're looking for something new as well, you know, yeah. and we are the guys that they're looking for. That's yeah, yeah. those are my thoughts. But it's everywhere. Hip hop is everywhere. Like um, the thing that cracked me up about that show was like. Number one, how reserved the people were. You know, they didn't really applaud much. And they just stood nah, there and watched it. Yeah. But as soon as we started, about two shows in, that B-Boy crew just jumped up on stage and started doing their yeah. interpretation of <laughs> breaking. Some of them were pretty cool. Yeah. We also got booed that show. There was someone out there. There was someone at that Vanuatu show when we were performing that was saying to me, Get off the stage and go back home to where you, you don't bring this shit here. But, you know, I think I said something like, uh, you know, bro, we're the same people or something. It was in the middle of our performance, which was interesting. And um, that whole Vanuatu experience was amazing, bro. Me, you, George. I think that's kind of where it sort of started, like where I thought, man, it's time to, you know, flip it up and, and let's go. I didn't even know we were going at Hero, but I just thought, yo, this is the perfect opportunity, you know, to just make something happen. And I really enjoyed that, bro. That was a fucking amazing experience. The Fest Napoan, hey, the Napoan Fest. Yeah, yeah. We, we got to go back there, bro. And the, see, it's all through the Pacific, we, uh, the Fijian boys. Yeah. That we were uh, staying next to. Well, we need to go back there with our whole team. Hey, us, our producer, DOP, DJ, and just document the whole, yeah. the whole fucking experience. I reckon I could do... We had a show at a festival, and then that night we had a... Um, we had a kick at a, at, a, at a nightclub and we went to do the sound check oh. during the day and they said, oh, oh, you have to um, do your sound check after, after the movie finishes. <laughs> like, That's movie, right. Yeah, That's right. Well, movie we theater. thought it was a nightclub, but it was a fucking movie theater scene. They said, no. <laughs> they, they, like, yeah, well, is this a nightclub or a movie theater? And yeah. They said it's both. It's both. So when it's not my time, it's, it's a movie yeah. theater. But but bro, we got in there and every, we got in there and everyone's drinking. Like there was a bar there and everyone's just like, oh, cool, <laughs> all of the fucking the fucking beers. You know, the islands are aren't, aren't a very complicated place, eh? Well, like they thrive on tourism and that, but. Um, you know, naturally the people are humble and they just, they just want to catch up and 
It's very simple, eh, bro? Mm, simple, eh? Man, the food was unreal. Amazing. But the, the thing I like was that the simplicity. Like, uh, hungry, get out to the fish trap and yeah. spear some fish. And what was, that, what was the was nephew's it. name? Remember the nephew? Oh. We had this, I had this nephew over there, Sin, right? The nephew. <laughs> he brought me a fucking plastic bag. I said, yo, fucking good. He, he smoked. He's like, yeah, man, a little bit. Come around and fucking had a plastic bag full of the shit. <laughs> I was like, Jesus, could I tell you? <laughs> Fuck, you know. But, you know, show love, you show love, get love. You know, get love, show love. That's kind of, that's some hip hop shit that I learned from, from you guys, bro, you know, like. Uh, open door policy. Um, you know, um, let motherfuckers be who they want to be. You know, that was, that's that whole foot soldiers experience also, you know, like, that's something that, that, that's why our city's the way it is, you know, like, yeah, you know. But, yeah, there's always been, I, I think Wellington is just so small. Everyone knows each other. Yeah. Um, Everyone knows each other. Like all the real. boys know the DJs, all the DJs know the MCs. It's like all the writers, you know. And that's real talk. Uh, yeah, man. So, man, what up? Do you want to just remind everyone about the release yeah. one more time? It's up to everybody to, uh, that's, that's tuned into our stream right now. Uh, check out the uh, links on the uh, the stream iTunes and uh, Apple Music, Spotify. Click those links and pre-order the album right now. It's about to drop in about 40 minutes. Uh, get the full release. First single, Free Ali. Second single, Rap Life featuring DJ Raw. My guy. Um, you know, this project is dedicated to Wellington City and, uh, and hip hop. Uh, you know, it's dedicated to the OGs. It's dedicated to my brother, Ali Kabani. And they're locked up right now. I miss you, my bro. And um, my Albro Cosmo. I miss you too, my horse. We're going to celebrate when it's time. And um, thank you to everybody who's tuned in. We really appreciate your support. Pre order the album right now. Get your wife's credit card. Get your husband's credit card. Get your daughter's credit card. <laughs> Get your little son's credit card. And uh, pre order that right now. We're trying to push this uh, project to number one. We're sitting at number eight right now, which is, even if tomorrow, I wake up tomorrow, and we're still at number eight, I'm gonna be happy. I'm gonna be happy because what a great team and teamwork makes a dream work. You can't ask for much more. That's my word. Flows King of Wellington. Flows underscore King underscore Wellington and uh, follow me on my journey. Tune into Facebook, Make Music Old T at All and uh, Flows King of Wellington. Shout outs to our producer Sin, our DOP uh, Dave Hamilton and the Flash Dog crew. Our DJ on the decks, uh, DJ Soundwave and the whole CPC family. Make Music Old T at All Limited and DJ Raw Entertainment. What up to all our peoples out there tuned in. Yeah. Amazing evening, Raw. Yeah, man. Uh, I was gonna say, any questions from the public? A couple of comments I got back from the from the video. Of course, I'm in pretty good shape. <laughs> <laughs> said, yeah, he trains quite a bit. Like, and you're pretty healthy all the time, you know. You're not. There's a lot of you know. A lot of the boys out there, you know, struggling with. Uh, Eating with their health and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, what's some of the stuff that you do? Like, because I know you. <laughs> you're right you're, there with me, bro. You know. Yeah, but you're pretty <laughs> particular about all what you eat and uh, your training and all that stuff. Yeah. So. Oh, you know, uh, my, my father's like, um, my father passed away from diabetes and. Um, and just before my father passed away, we resolved a whole lot of issues in that. And, I realized that, you know, um, 
you know, my father was heavy into his sugar and meat and that, so now I don't really, I don't really eat much sugar, I don't really eat dairy, I don't really eat meat, you know, um, I mean, pause. <laughs> that doesn't sound right, but you know what I mean, I don't, I don't, like beef and lamb and then I don't, I don't fuck with beef and lamb. Um, you know, chicken, yeah, every now and then. Fish is my main go-to. I like to dive, you know, go diving. And, but lots of greenery and try to alkalize. I train every day. You know, I'm at an age now where, you know, like, like the OG here, DJ Raw, we're just trying to lubricate the joints and stay in shape. But yeah, you know, I'm very particular. I'm um, a brown belt Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Been training with uh, Raw the last 10 plus years. We've been training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for a long time. Um, you know, the training is part of the routine. Kenny Mac taught me that from a young age. So I've kept that routine right up until now and it's really served me well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no sugar. Uh, no beef, no lamb. Lots of fish and greens, and I'm not a vegan, but you know I definitely eat a lot more alkalized food than I used to. I don't eat McDonald's. I don't eat KFC very much, very much. <laughs> you know, I don't. Polly's, we love that shit, but no, I don't eat. I don't eat that shit. I, I just try and eat good food all the time, also, and, and train regularly. Cardio is my buzz. You know. Cause I remember you talking about like, uh, you know, a lot of people, the standard food back in the islands, you know, mm. that's not what, what we eat over here, you know, and that's probably a big issue with, with health. Yeah, well, you know, you look at the islands, like a lot of their food is grown in the plantation, it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, we're the original, we, we come from the original alkalized diet, you know. Yeah, everything is growing in the back and, you know, fish is the main protein and coconut, you know, mm. the popo is our, is our main sustenance, you know, when there's no water. So, you know, if we, if we take it back to that diet, there was no meat in the islands, you know. The only meat was fish, really. If you think about it, bats, insects, you know, and so... You go back to the islands and a lot of the people over there, bro, they look like bodybuilders or, you know, they look like CT, you know what I mean, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. None of them are... Um, Just literally. I think my mom, I spoke to my mom about it and she was like, oh, you know, when we came from the islands, like, we didn't have the fruits and that, like the mangoes and, and all those, you know, the popo and all that. So sugar was like a substitute that they thought was okay, but ended up finding out that sugar was actually the worst, you know? So yeah, I definitely, I'm not like a fucking, you know, but yeah, I, I love training, love the routine, love good food, just simple shit. Like he says, you make the bomb porridge. <laughs> hey, shout to my guy Ricky. Yeah, you know, like, um, I learned about food hard and uh, one thing I do is I, um, I fast from, you know, the time I wake up to 1 p.m. in the afternoon and then I make this porridge, which is like, um, I'm, I cut a banana, half a banana and half an apple into the porridge and I cook it all together. And uh, I don't use water or uh, milk, I use coconut milk. And then once it's all cooked, I scoop a big fucking scoop of peanut butter. New Zealand made peanut butter, Dave, to be honest. Uh, made down in Nelson. And, uh, and I, I make this porridge which keeps me full from one till dinner time. So, a bit of cheating, but I tell you, bro, once you try the porridge, you, you never go back to Wheat Bix. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Well, pre-order, follow the link, 
appreciate your time and your efforts. Thank you to the whole team. Raw, if there's anything else you want to talk about. Nah, oh, man, I think it's time to sign off. Hey. But, uh, no, I never do this stuff. But, um, yeah, oh, awesome. Thank you, bro. It's been thank good, you. good chatting, good reminiscing. And, yeah, all the best with the, the project. And, yeah, hope it, it is what, what you want it to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe. So it will be. I'm pretty happy. Yes. Thank you so much for your time, Wolves. Thank you to everybody out there supporting and streaming and uh, see you in the morning. <laughs> Let's see where we're sitting tomorrow morning. Thank you, Dave, Paulus and Sin, DJ Raw. Let's go. <laughs>